Tonight on News 5 Live, controversy at City Hall where majority councillors disapprove of the new city administrator appointment. Michael Usher is gunned down far from where he lives in Majestic Alley. The opposition questions the effectiveness of the existing SOE. And PM Bersenio discusses the appointment of new junior ministers. These stories and more coming up on News 5 Live. For 19 years, SMART has been the pulse of our nation. A journey of growth, innovation, resilience, and unity. From the first call that bridged distances to the data that brought us closer than ever, SMART has been there, weaving threads of connection across our beautiful land. We have been active in providing innovative solutions to enhance our customers' lifestyles. Over the years, SMART has developed and provided various services to meet customers' needs. To the dreamers, doers, and the believers, thank you for making SMART a part of your story. For 19 years of trust, loyalty, partnership, and shared experiences. As we celebrate 19 years of connecting lives and dreams, let's keep the rhythm alive. Together, let's continue to shape our future one connection at a time. Come and be a part of the SMART family where we empower you and our country, today, tomorrow, and beyond. Smart! Bringing people together! One million sixty-seven thousand seven hundred slices of bacon are eaten by tourists each year, stimulating our local economy. Tourism means business. We understand that there aren't enough hours in the day. That's why RFNG is working to make the process of renewing your insurance policies easier. WhatsApp the words, get started to 6708700. We will prompt you to select the service you are interested in. Select the service and answer a few simple questions. 
an RFNG representative will process your request and follow up with you when your transaction is completed. It's that easy. Use WhatsApp and skip the lines. Remember, it pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a road group company. And welcome to News 5 Live for Tuesday, April 16th. I am Sabrina Daly. Only one day after his appointment became official, incoming city administrator Albert Vaughn is under fire from within the newly elected Belize City Council. Of note is that several of those councillors, including Deputy Mayor Alan Pollard Jr., were his colleagues during the previous term of office. Six of ten councillors have written to Mayor Bernard Wagner, registering their discontent with Vaughn's selection. The letter begins by saying, quote, We write with grave concern regarding the purported appointment of Albert Vaughn as the city administrator for Belize City, unquote. In the letter, the councillors cite Section 13 of the Belize City Council Act, which states that the council shall appoint a suitably qualified person as city administrator. The letter further notes that the executive arm of the council, the caucus, has not met to debate any recomm recommendations for appointment, nor has any resolution been circulated to members regarding the appointment of a city administrator. All things considered, the six councillors referred to Vaughan's appointment as unlawful. They requested a meeting of the council to, de to debate the appointment of a city administrator. On Monday, News 5 spoke with Vaughn and asked him about the experience he garnered as a counselor, as well as his qualifications that equip him for the role. Here is what he told us. During my term here as a counselor, I have served in various capacities that have made me work very closely with the professional people here at the Belize City Council in all areas. I believe that um, the, the former city administrator and I has a very, very close relationship. In fact, I, 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 I think I can believe, I can safely say that, that I was part of our advising team here um, during my time as a councillor here. Um, I have been all over this city council during those six years. I have been at work, so I have been at traffic. I go, uh, you know, I'm comfortable. I think that one of the, one of the major team too was in the finance department, where where you have to physically go in there and work with the finance team, I have been with the with the with the committees. I have run committees here in these councils, right? I have worked, and I believe that I bring that experience and I bring that to the table to help this. This morning, Prime Minister John Bersenio commented on the controversial appointment of former councillor Albert Vaughn as CITCO's new city administrator. While he was clear in stating that he does not intervene in decisions taken at the municipal level, he was optimistic that the matter would be resolved by day's end. I've always said that these, are, these issues are uh, the decision of the council and um, we can only advise. Um, as I know that um, most of the PUP representatives in, in Belize City, I think um, probably at least four of them um, are supporting, or five of them are supporting um, Albert Vaughan. Um, but again, that's a matter for the, for the council, and I'm, I'm hoping that um, somehow this will be resolved after the Who are you supporting as Prime Minister? I don't think it's not for me to who is to support. I will work with whosoever the council decide that they want to have as the city manager. Do you find it as a as a political embarrassment considering it's a month into the after the elections and there's this fighting going on when this isn't what the voters are voted for? 
Well, it's not necessarily. If the voters have voted for councils that are going to represent their interests, and the councils believe that um, they want somebody else, that, that that's their right. And um, I, I wish we could have done it better, of course, but it's not a matter that, oh, I'm upset or whatever. It, it is a part of the democratic process. And weighing in on the internal row at City Hall was opposition leader Shine Barrow, who told reporters earlier today that the question of Vaughn's qualifications is relevant because he seemingly lacks the requirements for the post of city administrator. As far as that is concerned, again, another failed promise to deliver on good governance and transparency, and this is not coming from a political partisan figure. This is coming from the six councillors that have written to the mayor um, denouncing this appointment because of qualifications. Um, certainly Albert Vaughan served as a councillor, he served as a, a member of the BDF, but other than that I don't know what qualifications he has uh, to serve as city administrator to deal with the finances of the city and it is not an instance where he's an elected member of the House and let's say you are elected Prime Minister, you become automatically Minister of Finance and you have technocrats there to guide you. And certainly where the councillors themselves are telling you that they question the qualifications of Mr. Vaughan and they question the process by which the Mayor has gone about uh, appointing a crony um, this is certainly a sad day for uh, the municipalities, um, but no different than what has been going on. We saw this with Sharon Palacio in Belmopan. Um, we saw uh, a division in Punta Gorda. And uh, I spoke of the conflict between uh, the deputy mayor and the current mayor um, leading up to the municipal election. So I expect more of this um, to come. Referring to the letter sent to Mayor Wagner by the majority councillors, the leader of the opposition also says that transparency and democracy are also being called into question, based on the unilateral decision to appoint Vaughan as the new city administrator. I do believe that um, when six councillors, that is the majority, that is the letter that I saw, that mm -hmm. six councillors object to Mr. Vaughan. I think that speaks volume, volume as to where they are as far as transparency, as far as democracy, and uh, having the majority have its say. What it reflects is a dictatorship. So the boss say, Bresenio the boss say, go with Van, because the Van is team us, and we are run over everybody else. That's what it sounds like to me when six councillors, I mean, my goodness. But again, why am I complaining? Because for us it's good. Uh, Albert Vaughan is going to be a disaster um, at City Hall. So that, that is, again, but that's selfish. For the, the, the citizens, the only reason I'm commenting, for the residents of Belize City, it will be a disaster. And so my political selfishness aside, I prefer that someone be there that actually does good. Again, maybe I'm not a conventional politician, but I actually want the government to succeed. I want the municipal bodies to succeed, regardless of their political affiliation, because that benefits the people of Belize. Coming up, former junior college honor student slain. Hello friends, this is Dr. Bob Roberts with another 60 second sermon from God's Word. The Bible says rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Some time ago I read the story of a small boy who illustrates this verse of scripture perfectly. He was a little fellow with a big heart. His next door neighbor was an older gentleman whose wife had recently died. When the youngster saw the elderly man crying, he climbed one day up onto his lap and simply sat there. Later, his mother asked the little fellow what he had said to their saddened neighbor. He responded with these words, nothing, I just helped him to cry. Sometimes that is the best thing that we can do for our friends who are facing sadness and sorrow. 
Often when words are inappropriate and gifts seem so insignificant, we need to help our friends cry and let them know that we are there because we care. Sometimes love is conveyed not by what is said, but by what is not said, not by the words that we speak, but by the tears that is shed. When Jesus wept with Mary and Martha at the death of Lazarus, their friends said, See how he loved him. Someone today who is hurting and needs help needs to know that you can cry with them. Today's 60-second sermon has been presented by Dr. Bob Roberts and Christian Foundations of Faith. <laughs> Well, sir, I really did go through some stress with my barber. This man here, they push my hairline way back to the 90s. Sure. Uh, people, they call me BB Buck Buck Farid now. Sir, so I got a problem, right? I just did this photo shoot, and I wanted the best photo shoot. But somebody, I want me to post it up. Hmm? I just tired of this man. I don't want to tell her where catch me from my way. I stopped at the shop and I tell the lady I want five dollars tacos. You could imagine what you give me? No, no, no. <clears throat> what are your problem? Honestly, life good for me over here. I just upgraded to the Digi One Elite. I have unlimited postpaid plans, Digi TV, free home phone, and the fastest home internet. I went upgrade man's no. A man was shot and killed in the Lake Independence area of Belize City on Monday night. The incident happened in front of an apartment complex shortly before 8 p.m. on Flamboyant Street near its intersection with Mahogany Street. The victim is Michael Usher, a resident of the Majestic Alley area. Police are investigating the motive behind the killing, but notably, the Belize Police Department instituted a state of emergency in March to reduce the level of gang-related violence in Belize City. And from all indications, this latest murder was the result of gang rivalry that spans two neighborhoods which are geographically distant. News 5's Marion Alley has the story. This was how residents of Flamboyant Street found 33-year-old Michael Usher after he was shot sometime before 8 on Monday night. The Pink's Alley resident was reportedly heading towards Mahogany Street on foot when he came under gunfire. 
A young man approached him from behind and shot Usher as he reached in front of this apartment complex. Residents would not speak to us on record, but indicated that they were inside their homes when they heard as many as six shots ring out. When the shooting subsided, they ventured outside and saw Usher fatally wounded lying on the concrete. The police, in a press release, informed that upon their arrival at the scene, Usher appeared motionless and that he was pronounced dead on arrival at the KHMH. This morning, when we visited the location, bloodstains were still visible where Usher fell and took his final breath. Usher attended Wesley Junior College from 2007 to 2010, was the president of the Sudan Council government at the junior college, and was also reportedly an honor student. But what he did upon his graduation is anyone's guess. In April 2022, he was the victim of a shooting along with two others while on Handyside Street. At that time, there were two assailants on a motorcycle who targeted the trio. Police have not indicated whether they have detained anyone for this latest homicide. Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali. On Sunday, a murder in Placentia sent shockwaves across the peaceful coastal community as family and friends mourn the loss of 33-year-old Roy Burgess. Reports are that Burgess was inside his vehicle on mile 22 along the Placentia Road with a female companion, Maya James, when they were approached by a male suspect who opened fire on the unsuspecting pair. James, who was shot in the face, is still recovering and seeking financial assistance from the public for her medical expenses. Unfortunately, Burgess succumbed to his injuries that day. In relation to the incident, two persons are being sought for questioning by the police. They are 31-year-old Ellis Main and 29-year-old Joseph Vaccaro. Both men are known to the police. When a state of emergency was introduced three weeks ago, there was talk that it would be extended and expanded to include other areas as the police department saw fit. Monday's murder of Michael Usher, who lived in the vicinity of Majestic Alley, but was shot and killed near Mahogany Street, means that the police department may have to re-strategize so as to prevent retaliation among those viral group, rival groups. This was the scope of the SOE as it applied to those areas in Belize City back in March, as explained by Commissioner of Police Chester Williams. The police and the BDF are on operations within not just the Antelope area, but practically the entire south side Belize City. As you would be aware by now, a state of emergency was declared this morning. Um, covering the almost the entire south side Belize City. Here in Belize City, you would know that um, we have had a spate of shootings, two of which were fatal. The truth is we have seen a long lull in gang violence in Belize City. Again, I always said it takes one idiot to pull a trigger, and uh, that could cause a flare-up. And these flare-ups are going to happen occasionally, and we have to be able to have the right approach in dealing with it. As I have said to the minister when we discussed the SOE, that it had reached a stage where if we don't do something, then the cancer is going to spread further and then the other gangs are going to feel like, oh, over there is flaring up and nothing has been done to them, so better we have we own thing to. So we have to ensure that we do something that is um, measurable and uh, that is going to bring some calm. Meanwhile, the leader of the opposition, Moses Shine Barrow, has slammed the government and more directly the prime minister for what he calls an ineffective state of emergency. Today, Barrow pointed to murders that have happened while the SOE has been in place. Barrow also blasts PM John Bersenio as chair of the National Security Commission, which he also believes has been ineffective when it comes to fighting crime. I don't recall uh, over the last uh, 15 years at least that there has ever been a situation where the government has declared a state of emergency and we have had uh, this amount of murder take place. Um, I'd like to quote uh, the learned or some would say unlearned Prime Minister John Bersenio. Uh, 
it is apparent that our government has no real solution to solving crime. Nowhere was this more evident than in, this was uh, during the UDP era, when the government declared a state of emergency on the people of the south side of Belize City, which did not result in any lasting peace. The sad, tragic irony of this is under the state of emergency, I believe the, the first day or day after the state of emergency was declared we had a murder. Um, the Minister of Police is failing. We have been saying that for the last three years. The Prime Minister, as the chair of the National Security Commission, is failing. The fact of the matter is since the government, the PUP government declared a state of emergency, we've had more murders than I believe at any time that a state of emergency has been declared. An American retiree has died while snorkeling near the Glover Reef atolls. On April 15th, the unresponsive body of 74-year-old Kent Hills Foster was taken to the Southern Regional Hospital morgue in Dangriga Town, where he was identified by his wife, Pamela Gay Fairley. Reports are that the two had been vacationing in Belize, having arrived on April 10th, and while snorkeling on the 15th, Foster started experiencing complications. His wife attempted to assist him but was unable to. Foster lost consciousness, and the captain of the catamaran, who the couple had chartered, performed CPR, but was also unsuccessful in his efforts. He was taken to the Southern Regional Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 12.26 p.m. While, at, while a post-mortem exam is still pending, Foster's medical records show that he had aortic dissection, which is a rare but deadly condition where the inner layer of the aorta tears and blood flows between the layers, weakening the artery wall. Foster had undergone treatment for this condition three weeks prior to his passing. An initial investigation revealed no signs of foul play at this time. After the break, PM comments on addition of new junior ministers. But first, here's a weather update with data from the Belize Met Service.
19 years, SMART has been the pulse of our nation. A journey of growth, innovation, resilience, and unity. From the first call that bridged distances to the data that brought us closer than ever, SMART has been there, weaving threads of connection across our beautiful land. We have been active in providing innovative solutions to enhance our customers' lifestyles. Over the years, SMART has developed and provided various services to meet customers' needs. To the dreamers, doers, and the believers, thank you for making SMART a part of your story. For 19 years of trust, loyalty, partnership, and shared experiences. As we celebrate 19 years of connecting lives and dreams, let's keep the rhythm alive. Together, let's continue to shape our future one connection at a time. Come and be a part of the SMART family where we empower you and our country today, tomorrow, and beyond. SMART! Bringing people together! Hey Belize, come join us at the Belize Earth Day at Creatively Green Pop-Up happening at the Memorial Park on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Shop from a wide selection of eco-friendly boots, light, soul handmade clay jewelry, Hello Body Belize, Naturally Belize Cosmetics, Belize Eco Bag, Zero Belize, and so much more. Enjoy delectable food and beverages from Don Ceviche, Iguana Stop, Brain Freeze Margaritas, just to name a few. Live performances by QBN Band, Britney Star, and Yes Talia. For more details, call us at 227-2420. The Belize Earth Day pop-up is brought to you by the Belize Tourism Board in partnership with the Belize City Council. Sponsors include DigiWallet, Coca-Cola, and the Belize Waste Control Limited. See you on April 20th at the Memorial Park. On April 3rd, Prime Minister John Bersenio announced new portfolio assignments as well as the appointments of three additional ministers of state, including Alex Palona, Marconi Leal Sr. and Jorge Espat. In the wake of that announcement, the opposition has been critical of the decision to include more junior ministers as part of the Bersenio administration. This morning, when we caught up with the Prime Minister, we asked him about the recent changes. We've expanded the number of junior ministers uh, in government. How do you respond to the criticism levied by the United Democratic Party in terms of the specific roles of these uh, ministers of state? Well, I think they're the last to be able to talk, I mean, because of what they did when they were in government. The point that I, that I was trying to make is that, one of, first of all, it is not costing much is, um, to, 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 the, to, the, to the voters or the taxpayers. Why? Because they have been chairpersons of, uh, of, of House committees. And that had, a, because of that, they, they had to increase their salary. You know that they have become uh, ministers of state. That is going to be reduced so that they, they don't have an um, a unbalance on the amount of monies that they collect with, along um, with, with their colleagues. What is important is that uh, they'll be able to, to provide more work and to be able to do good work. For, for, for the people in, in not only their constituencies but in the country to help the ministers. We have a lot of work ahead of us and we believe that, uh, that there's still time is coming up on us and we need to be able to get the work done. In that same release issued by the government of Belize earlier this month, it was also announced that Belize Rural South Area Representative Andrew Perez would be returning to Cabinet as Minister of Blue Economy and Disaster Risk Management. The news came after several months of Perez being sidelined from government following a sex scandal including a female attorney. So what became of an investigation into the matter? When asked about the inquiry led by the Attorney General, the PM opted not to touch on the controversial issue. I really don't want to go into that, as with a lot of that has been said. I don't want to go back and forth with Ms. Angzilu. Um, what I can tell you is that um, anybody could have made any report to, to the Attorney General and nobody did. But was there actually an investigation? Said, did. The, the investigation was that no laws were broken. Um, you could question the judgment of the, of the person, but no laws were broken that came to light. 
nobody went to the um, to the attorney general and said, "Here is the evidence." And so it Next was question. determined that the minister did not offer things that he shouldn't have to this woman. As I said, no, nothing came to, to attention, no evidence. The point of, the, I think the point that you all are missing is that um, Minister Perez went into his constituency and he worked hard. And um, for this municipal election, he, for this election, he along with, uh, with, minister, with the, with the, um, with the mayor, um, while in Nunez, they won by the largest margin ever in the history of San Pedro. The housing budget is arguably the smallest allocation in this year's fiscal plan. But is the Briseño administration considering an increase in the expenditure set aside for the construction of new houses across the country? Is there any potential that the housing budget would be increased via supplementary? Um, people have complained how minor it is. Well, let's put it this way. It's way better than what the UDP was doing. I mean, the UDP, were, they built no homes, and so far we have built going to close to 400 homes to houses, and that's what you need to look at what is, what is it that we're getting for. The UDP voted for $8 million every year, and no houses are being built. You know, so we are building houses. Yes, we've said we'd want to do more, um, but we have to do with what we have. We are just looking around, see if we can get um, cheap long-term funding, and, and we're working on that. And should we get that, then obviously we're going to make it available for housing. Last month, the stevedores, who are, who are members of the Christian Workers' Union, turned out at their job site at the Port of Belize Limited to state their discontent with the government and the port on two main issues. They wanted fair and immediate compensation from the government after bulk sugar stopped going to that port for export and was instead channeled through the Big Creek port. That meant that the stevedores lost earnings from that shipment. They also wanted the port to sit with them to come up with a collective bargaining agreement. Today, president of the CWU, Leonora Flowers, told News 5 that while the government has paid up $1.6 million to the stevedores in compensation, the CBA is still pending with the port and being worked on over the next few weeks. But aside from that, there is one other concern she shared with us. What we agreed also in that those last days were to move was to move with the discussion on the new negotiations of the, the CBA. And so we are getting into those as um, in the next couple of weeks. Actually, we are waiting for the date to be set so we can agree on the days. So as it relates to sugar money, there is no more contention with Port of Belize and the government of Belize. That is a done deal. Um, what, is, what is of a bother to us right now, and a serious one, is the fact that on the 22nd of July 2020, 35 of our members were terminated. In that 35 were members who were adamant and outspoken and who were the more boisterous of our members who headed the union representation, the chiefs, and so forth. And so when they were singled out, we believe they were targeted because of their affiliation with the union and the role they played in keeping our members um, hyped up when there was something to say at all times. And so we took that matter to the Labor Complaints Tribunal. Before that, the Labor Complaints Tribunal did not even exist. As a matter of fact, the Ministry of Labor had to implement that tribunal because of the need. And that has been four years now, and we have not gotten a resolution on that matter. As late as last year, October, November, we, submit, we made written submissions. Our members did their testimonials, as the tribunal um, panel had requested. And to date, Marin, there has not been a response. And so it's very unnerving to think that a group of people will get a task, accept the task, accept their nomination on the panel, 
and still be unable to present what is their findings and, and come to a resolution. One thing we know, we, we have been going into the tribunal procedure quite detailed, and we were told, well, you don't have to be called. You can, um, the kind of procedures say that you don't have to be called to a hearing. But in this specific instance, we believe that we are to be heard because we're making um, allegations against the court to say that there was evidence there is evidence of union busting, and we believe that the tribunal owes a responsibility to delve into those matters and to come up with what the reason, reasonable man would see as union busting, because we believe it is. And we believe our case has merit. The Caribbean Court of Justice today heard an appeal concerning a ruling handed down by Belize's Court of Appeal back in March of 2023. The appellants in the matter are the Attorney General and the Minister of Natural Resources, and the respondent is Primrose Gabriel. Viewers may recall that back in 2017, the government of Belize compulsorily acquired the Buttonwood Bay property. In 2023, the Court of Appeal ruled that Primrose Gabriel is entitled to over $1 million in full and fair compensation. The appellants are now seeking to set aside that Court of Appeal decision. As we said, the matter was heard today before the CCJ. The appellants are being represented by Samantha Matut, while Godfrey Smith appeared on behalf of the respondents. Here is some of how that played out. The fixed date claim that was filed, if your honors take a look at the number one relief that is being sought, it says that the respondent is actually seeking damages for violation of the claimant's rights under Section 17 of the Belize Constitution to protection from deprivation of its property, except by or under law, by the unlawful taking of approximately 1.35 acres of the claimant's property. In response to this fixed date claim form, Your Honours, an affidavit was filed on behalf of the appellant, and in that affidavit, there were certain admissions that would have been made by the, the appellant. I do apologize. And one of those admissions would have been the compulsory acquisition of the respondent's property, and this would have occurred in February of 2007. And in addition to that admission being made, there was the admission that the government was in fact ready and prepared to establish the land assessment board in order to make a determination of what would have been the just compensation that would have been due to the respondent. If the appellant's okay. appeal fails, this court can either affirm uh, the, the judgment of the court of appeal, in which case the order is made would uh, consequentially flow or perhaps this court can decide that it can do the valuation. The matter was adjourned for the, CC, for the CCJ to make a decision on the matter. When we return in this week's Culture Tuesday, introducing Tableta, a Belizean coconut sweet. Join us at the Belize Earth Day at Creatively Green Pop-Up happening at the Memorial Park on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
Shop from a wide selection of eco-friendly boots, light, soul handmade clay jewelry, Hello Body Belize, Naturally Belize Cosmetics, Belize Eco Bag, Zero Belize, and so much more. Enjoy delectable food and beverages from Don Ceviche, Iguana Stop, Brain Freeze Margaritas, just to name a few. Live performances by QB and Band, Britney Star, and Yes Talia. For more details, call us at 227-2420. The Belize Earth Day pop-up is brought to you by the Belize Tourism Board in partnership with the Belize City Council. Sponsors include DigiWallet, Coca-Cola, and the Belize Waste Control Limited. See you on April 20th at the Memorial Park. Here is how to be a part of Benny's homecation in three easy steps. First, download the B-Bucks app and sign up to be eligible. It's fast and easy. Then, shop at any Benny's location or Benny's entity. Remember to choose products from our monthly Homecation Jackpot categories to earn entries. Now you can earn B-Box with purchases made and be a part of the Benny's Homecation Jackpot for a chance to win the $10,000 grand prize in December. Win the ultimate Homecation with Benny's quality and savings. Almost a year ago, Colonel Hyde told the nation there would be an examination of land instruments regarding allegations of fraud surrounding the execution-style murder of businessman Ricardo Borja. We are looking at all the instruments inside our ministry, all the instruments that may have involved participation from this deceased, and to see whether we uncover anything that investigation or that examination. We don't want to call it investigation because police does investigation. Hyde still has not reported back to the nation on any findings, leading us to conclude no such examination ever took place. Now, another execution-style murder, which has just occurred in Dangriga, is once again being attributed to land fraud at the Ministry of Natural Resources. The unprecedented corruption and criminality inside the Lands Department is costing lives, and as the minister in charge, Colonel Hyde needs to do something about it. Or are we to conclude that he is okay with it? Shop smart for your Samsung devices in Belize and enjoy benefits you won't get anywhere else. When you shop locally for your Samsung, all your devices will be covered by a one-year local warranty. You won't get that when shopping with the other guys. When in doubt, always look for the Cellular World seal to know you're getting the real deal. Shop with confidence and enjoy your Galaxy knowing that it can be repaired locally at our Samsung Service Center by certified Samsung technicians using original parts and machinery. Even better, enjoy the best LTE experience in Belize knowing that your Samsung devices are compatible with major local carrier networks. Get the ultimate Samsung Galaxy experience only when you shop from authorized Samsung resellers nationwide. If you're a coconut lover, then you've probably tried this Belizean coconut sweet treat, tableta. Different people approach the recipe in their unique ways. But the primary ingredients of tableta are coconut flakes, ginger, and sugar. It is one of those cultural sweets that Belizeans enjoy as a dessert or simply to satisfy a craving. The preparation process has been passed down from generations and it still lives on. In tonight's episode of Culture Tuesday, News 5's Paul Lopez traveled to Sand Hill Village to learn how to make tableta from one resident who learned the recipe from her mother more than four decades ago. Here's that story. Sharon Leslie splits wood for her fire hearth. This is the first step in the process to make tableta, a Belizean coconut sweet. And they chopped the wood now for light the fire so we could start to make the tableta, right? She sources pine wood from land in Sun Hill Village, where she has lived since childhood. Leslie was 10 years old when her mother first taught her how to make tableta. Because my mother do not we to help her, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a, I am the oldest girl because then for my mom. Mm -hmm. so. 
And at that time, you may see it as a chore or you may see it as fun. As fun because mm, my mother do something and we really help out, so. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. Like when we used to make cake. You never know, gonna mix on anything there. That my hand. You got your bucket and your stir. The wood is lit and the first step is complete. The fire heart is Leslie's preferred method for cooking tableta. The stove is too small because sometimes I have to make a big amount. Right? So this lady that I need $60 worth, then I can't put the nip on the stove. And you take too long. Leslie places a huge cast iron pot over the fire and ensures that it is thoroughly clean. You want to see this pot when I finish with it? Because you have some people when the tablet once my, the tablet is finished. There is nothing in the spot. And that's how you, you do yours. Right. Why? Well, no, no, see, now you put yourself to the test. Can you give me a promise? I have to see if that thing is real. For this recipe, Leslie grates three coconuts. She is very particular about the types of coconuts she uses in her product. We now use yeah. dry coconut. You have to be half green. Half green coconut to grate tight. The main ingredient was and the white sugar, no brown sugar, white. Because some people do make it with brown, right? But I don't know. For now they make it is with white, not brown. And my mom teach me then. After the grating, Leslie pours her white sugar into the heated cast iron pot. This process requires constant stirring to prevent the sugar from burning while it melts over the fire. When she wants to increase the heat, Leslie adds more wood. Similarly, to decrease the temperature, she removes wood from the fire. After 10 minutes, the sugar is completely melted. Right, now we are going to add the trash to it. Leslie takes a break from stirring to grate a piece of ginger that she adds to the pot closer to the end of the cooking process. She has passed down these skills to her two daughters to keep the tradition alive, but she says that they prefer staring clear of the fire hearth and working their 8 to 5 jobs. The 12-year-old grandson assists her when he is off from school. You got some people where they to stay today. They call me for another week and say, Mr. Leslie, I need a $40 tablet and a $20 cut of brute for care. They want to inform me ahead of time so I could get the coconut prepared for my kit. Soon after the cooking process is complete, Leslie transfers the tablet onto a flat wooden surface to cool down. She flattens out the finished products with her hands and a cup. We don't smooth it out. Now I left it for cool for like 20 minutes. Then we could slice and you guys can have your taste. Watch, so the pot just as clean as Miss Louise said it would be. So you could take her at a word. Clean pot. Now it's time for the taste test, though the tableta required a bit more time to cool down. Original tableta, straight from the fire heart, the way your granny used to do it. Miss Leslie. Man, you can't beat this. I tell you that. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez. Sharon Leslie can be reached on her Facebook page at Louise Leslie or by phone at 625-276. In March 2024, four representatives from various Belizean organizations journeyed to America to participate in the Young Leaders of the Americas initiative. This program was launched by the U.S. Department of State in 2015 with the mission to empower emerging entrepreneurs and business leaders from Latin America, the Caribbean and Canada. This year, over 260 entrepreneurs spent four weeks with various U.S. organizations nationwide. News 5's Brittany Gordon spoke with two of these participants today to learn more about the experience. Here's that story. 
The Leaders of the Americas Initiative is a five-week program for entrepreneurs funded by the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. In this annual fellowship, nearly 300 promising leaders from Latin America, the Caribbean, and Canada travel to the United States to expand their leadership and entrepreneurial skills and network through skill-building workshops and opportunities to learn from and exchange with U.S. counterparts. YLAI states that participants are selected via a competitive application process. We spoke with Iniki Zuniga, owner of Aesthetics Marketing Solutions in Belize, who was a participant in this year's event. What is it that you do while a part of this program? Well, we basically get to be partnered with another organization that is similar to ours so that we can learn. First of all, they ask us what is the major problem of our business. For me, it was scaling and expansion. So they found a company that was already in the process of scaling and expanding, and that way I could witness how they are doing it. And from there, I, um, I feel like I'm more equipped now to scale and expand my business here in Belize. Zuniga explained that he had previously applied for the fellowship in 2015 when it was first launched, but was not selected. This year, he decided to try again, as he is now doing business full-time, and his application was approved. He said that his program started off in Houston before moving over to Utah and finishing in Washington, D.C. The main takeaway is sharing your business and networking helps a lot because now I have a lot more opportunities and also now I have a lot more resources that I could, get, that I could use to expand and help my business. If I was offered to do it again, I'd definitely do it again. The, the, the program is very helpful, very useful and very beneficial to anybody that would join. Also participating in the program was Javier Saki, owner of Yash Kane Butterfly Farm in Maya Center, Stan Creek. Saki explained that he applied for the program after a colleague from the Department of Youth Services reached out to him about the opportunity. Youth Leaders um, of the Americas Initiative is it's an exchange program. Um, it connects young entrepreneurs from the Caribbean, Central and South America to U.S. companies and organizations. Um, and they will place you with um, companies and organizations that align with your business. For example, in my case, um, I, I'm a butterfly farmer. I do butterfly farming. So they placed me with Butterfly Wonderland. Um, it's a butterfly conservatory in the United States. And it is the largest butterfly conservatory in the United States. So I'm very fortunate enough to work with the director side by side um, um, to, to teach me how to develop my business more. Much like Zuniga, Saki stated that one of the challenges his company faces is expansion and through the program, he was able to learn how to overcome that. Another aspect of the program that Saki enjoyed was the cultural exchange between other participants and friendships he was able to foster. I think the best part of the experience was with uh, was connecting with the other 14 fellows that was placed with me in Phoenix, Arizona. So they were from South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. And I, we made long life friendships. We became a family. And we connected so much. And now I have friends from different parts of South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. So to me, that was the the best part of the experience, the bond that we created. So um, I think uh, it's a life changing experience for me. Like I said, so when I came back, um, I have a different mindset now. I'm not the same person when I left. Um, so when I uh, when I came back now, I am motivated more than ever to develop my business and to look for more opportunities. Uh, and one of the things we also found is we found a market for our butterflies in the United States with Butterfly Wonderland. So there were some species that they're very interested in, and now we're starting to work on those species. We're starting to farm them so we can export them to the United States, um, to Butterfly Wonderland. So other people get to see, you know, the Belize and butterflies there, and they learn where, which country they come from and which part of, part of the country they come from. Brittany Gordon for News 5. Up next, Shine breaks silence amid Diddy's sex scandal. Internet should be more than fast. NextGen 360 gives you peace of mind. Security, room-to-room -room coverage, all under your control. Can your internet do that? Every 
every day, we access energy for cooling, lighting, and powering our electrical appliances and devices at work and at home. During cooler months, we rely less on cooling appliances such as fans and air conditioners. However, during warmer months, as the temperature and humidity rises, we use more energy to cool our spaces and our appliances and electrical devices work harder than they do during the rest of the year. When the months become hotter, let's all practice energy conservation. Here are a few changes that you can make to manage your energy use. Check that all appliances and electrical devices are working efficiently. Turn lights off when not in the room. Unplug chargers, appliances when not in use. Turn off fans and TVs. Use energy-saving light bulbs such as LEDs. And look for the Energy Star products when purchasing appliances and electrical devices. These easy changes can reduce energy use and costs. You can also monitor your energy use during the month by reading your meter and calculating the reading using BEL's bill calculator on our mobile app or by visiting our website. Let's all save energy. Upcoming enhancements to My Social Security. The new healthcare provider feature seamlessly connects healthcare providers, insured persons, and employers to facilitate the payment of sickness benefits. Here are the enhancements. Registered healthcare providers will create and submit online medical certificates using their healthcare provider accounts. Insured persons will receive a link to view the medical certificate to complete and submit their sickness benefit claim. And employers will receive an email notification of their employee's sickness claim. Also, the insured person and their employer will receive a copy of the claim decision letter after review. Healthcare providers, insured persons and employers are encouraged to create a portal account to access and benefit from these new services on My Social Security at ssbportal.org.bz. My Social Security Online Portal. Social Security at your fingertips. For 19 years, SMART has been the pulse of our nation. A journey of growth, innovation, resilience, and unity. From the first call that bridged distances to the data that brought us closer than ever, SMART has been there, weaving threads of connection across our beautiful land. We have been active in providing innovative solutions to enhance our customers' lifestyles. Over the years, SMART has developed and provided various services to meet customers' needs. To the dreamers, doers, and the believers, thank you for making SMART a part of your story. For 19 years of trust, loyalty, partnership, and shared experiences. As we celebrate 19 years of connecting lives and dreams, let's keep the rhythm alive. Together, let's continue to shape our future one connection at a time. Come and be a part of the SMART family where we empower you and our country today, tomorrow, and beyond. Smart! Bringing people together! Former bad boy recording artist Shine Barrow has broken his silence in the wake of a recent sex scandal that involves Sean Diddy Combs. Allegations have been brought against the well-known music mogul by a record producer who worked on Diddy's latest release. In the wake of those claims, a victim of the December 1999 shooting inside Club New York came forward via a social media video, during which she asserted that she was shot by Diddy and not rapper Shine. Barrow served almost a decade in prison after being convicted of the shooting, despite maintaining his innocence. Today, he finally spoke about the allegations made by producer Rodney Little Rod Jones, as well as the supporting claims made by shooting victim Natanya Rubin. It opens wounds um, when you hear, um, you know, the victim saying that it was Diddy that shot her. That is what is the most remarkable. Oh, you didn't see that? I saw it. Okay. And that was triggered by 
a lawsuit from a producer that produced on the Love album who is making accusations and in those accusations he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting and that is what stands out to me the most because you know I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward uh, and so um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Um, but my political enemies and, you know, detractors tried to make me into, you know, this criminal. Um, but everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the fall. Everyone knew that that was the story. I'm just saying that I maintain my innocence all this time. I said I was defending myself. I didn't get into who did what. Um, but the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that. But it does open wounds. And um, certainly, I am relieved that uh, people are saying what the truth is that, you know, I did not uh, shoot um, those people. I maintain that I never shoot nobody, um, that there were other guns there. I always said that. That has not changed. And that is the testimony that came out. Um, fragments were never removed. Uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was. Uh, but the victims are vindicating me. Uh, witnesses are vindicating me, but I have, I have moved on. I, I'm not trying to relive that. Uh, and, and so I am appreciative of whatever contributions uh, Diddy has made um, to help the people of Belize. Uh, I wish him well, I pray for him, and I pray for the alleged victims. And, and if, if it is true, may justice be served. If it is not, um, it, it, it's a tragedy because a, a, a global icon um, would have been destroyed. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available at channel5police.com, on our Facebook and on YouTube. I'm Sabrina Daly. Thanks for joining us. And from all of us here at News 5, good night.